Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, the session on building a forum service for Salesforce on Heroku. So thanks for taking time out of your lunch to attend the session. We have our handy uh, safe harbor. I'm not going to be speaking about anything that isn't generally available. So a little bit about myself. My name is Corey Cowgill. I'm a Force.com MVP. I've been developing on the platform for a number of years. Um, I came from a hardcore Java background, and I've been working on the platform for, like I said, a number of years. I work at uh, the warranty group as a basically Salesforce ninja, basically anything they need, um, I kind of work on. And we are hiring Salesforce developers. So if you're a Salesforce ninja, come see me after the session. So before we begin today's session, we're going to be, uh, it's a developer session, so that means code. We all like code, right? So we're going to be looking at Apex, Visual Force, uh, integration, HTTP callouts with REST APIs, and uh, a lightweight Java service class on a Heroku dyno. So most of the sessions will be interactive. We're going to be looking at code and going through the demo. I like to keep things light on the slideware front. So some of you may be here, hopefully. Um, actually, I should pull. How many of you are rendering PDFs in Salesforce today? OK, a lot of you. How many of you are using an AppExchange product to do your PDF rendering? OK, a few. Um, so a lot of times what you have to ask yourself is, if you need to render PDF forms on the platform, first off, you have to start with, are, what are my options? So if you go down the custom development route, all native on force.com, you can build a Visual Force page with the render as PDF attribute. Um, and that will basically take any Visual Force page you write and render it as a PDF. Um, if you're using out of the box uh, opportunities and opportunity line items, you can use the quote to sale uh, out of the box templates in Salesforce for quotes. And finally, you can also find a number of app exchange products. Uh, some that come to mind are Conga, you know, DocuSign is here. So there's a lot of great app exchange products that you should vet to see if they meet your requirement. However, you're going to encounter situations where you're going to have to build your own, possibly. Um, for example, if your use cases exhaust the standard functionality. So at the warranty group, we don't use the out-of-the-box opportunities and contracts um, or quotes. We have our own custom process for that. Um, we also, we're not able to use any app exchange products because we're a heavy users of community licenses and users who come into the um, our community log in, they need to generate contracts and PDFs and print them out at dealerships. So a lot of app exchange products you'll find are license based. So how many PDFs you generate um, per day? And we have millions. So we're a, a huge, we generate large volumes of PDF contracts um, each month. So the per licensing, even if it's pennies, is still expensive to us. And finally, we have use cases where you may not be able to use the Visual Force Render as PDF. So for example, if you need to invoke a PDF with images and a lot of different logic in it, you can't do that easily in a trigger. So a lot of times in a trigger, you won't be able to use a Visual Force page to render a whole lot of nice graphics. So we found that we couldn't use a Visual Force page. The other use case is we wanted our business to own the PDFs. They want to change the contract. They want to make the contract look different. We don't want our developers messing with the presentation layer. So this is another reason why you may not want to use a Visual Force PDF. So as I said, this is Lightware Lite. Um, we're going to go into the demonstration now and take a look at generating PDF documents uh, in Salesforce.com with Heroku. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to log into my demo org here. And so in Salesforce, we have a custom object, and we call it TWG contract. And this, I've pared all this down for the session. But it has some basic information you'd expect. Contract name, policy holder, deductible, just a few sample fields to show you that we can pass the data along. Now what I want to do here is I want to say, I want to generate a PDF. So we added a custom button here that calls a Visual Force page, and it says, do you want to generate a PDF contract? I'm going to go ahead and click yes. And when I click yes, what's going to happen is the controller is going to call an Apex Forms service class in Salesforce. And it's going to call out to the Heroku tier. And Heroku is going to basically render a PDF, return it synchronously. 
and it'll attach it as an attachment on the S object record in Salesforce. So I'm click generate PDF. And I call out. And I say, do you want to do yes? I click the yes button. Now what happened is that controller called out and I have a PDF document attached. I can click on this attachment, and I can click view, and here I have a PDF document with the information from the S object. So the policy number, the insurance type, the policy holder name, what's their deductible, and what's their email, along with the number of terms and conditions that are specific to this template. So that's cool. So you can see it's very quick. It called out to the Heroku tier, returned a PDF. And we're gonna, di we're gonna deep dive into this code in just a second. So we'll dig through the nuts and bolts of how this works. But say my use case, I can't do it through a generate PDF button. Say it needs to be a batch process or a trigger. Um, a lot of App Exchange products won't do that, unfortunately, or they will charge you additional money. So what we did is we had multiple use cases and we needed to do this in batch. So what I did is we have a trigger that we can do here, where when the record status is set to generate PDF, it's gonna, the trigger is going to call this same form service and attach a PDF. So I'm going to click Save. Now, how many of you are doing um, HTTP callouts and triggers? Okay. All right. So th for those of you who don't know, um, doing HTTP callouts and triggers, you have to do that asynchronously. So you'll see here in a second, I'll show you how to do that. But the important thing is you want to set a status. And my status is saying it's processing the contract generation. And if I refresh this, because it's asynchronous, it already finished and updated the status to say, I generated your contract. And again, it's the same contact. Same contract, right? So that's kind of the demo. As you can see, you can do it in multiple places through a trigger, through a Visual Force page. Very simple, very lightweight. Let's take a look at the code and see how this is done. So a little bit about this solution and how it works. It's 100% um, Salesforce, whoops. It's 100% Salesforce One platform. That means that we don't have anything other than Salesforce and Heroku. Um, and basically it's any invocation point, like I said. So we have our Visual Force page, triggers, batch apex, it all calls a single forms manager class. Um, how many of you are familiar with Apex separation of concerns? A few of you, right. So as you know, just in general, in object-oriented programming, you want to abstract away your logic and don't directly code that in a trigger and don't directly code that in a controller. You want to consolidate that logic so that it can be reused in multiple places. So what we did at the warranty group is we created a forms manager Apex class, and that manages the HTTP callout, the data processing, and attaching the record. And what we do is we do um, an HTTP callout using REST to the Heroku tier with a very lightweight Heroku dyno running a REST API, and it uses an open source library called ITEX to generate the PDF. And we chose ITEX because it's basically the number one used um, Java PDF library. For versioning and template management, we use Chatter. So in Chatter, for those of you who don't know, you can version your files in Chatter, and you can also make them publicly accessible URLs. So what we do is our business users will check in and check out the documents basically in Chatter and upload new versions. So a little bit about Acroform and ITEX. So the underlying technology we're using is Acroforms. It uh, basically allows you to create fillable PDFs and documents. And the good thing about Acroforms is you don't need an Adobe Acrobat license to create fillable PDFs. We wanted something that was anybody could use in our business. Everybody has Office. Some people use OpenOffice. Both of those platforms, you can create fillable PDFs in those platforms, in those um, Office suites, I should say and you can export fillable PDFs. So it's an industry standard, like I said, and it allows our business users to manage the PDFs. Um, a little bit about ITEX PDF library. Um, actually, Salesforce uses ITEX whenever you do Visual Force page render as PDF. If you check the metadata on that PDF, it's going to say generated by ITEX. It's basically 
the number one used PDF library. And it supports Acroforms and it's open source. So it makes it a good fit for these types of lightweight form service projects. And I will mention you can do a lot of things with iText that I'm not going to show you here. If you needed to merge multiple PDFs into one PDF, you can do that. Um, you can pull apart PDFs. You can do all sorts of stuff with it. So now we're going to do a code deep dive. And the first piece we're going to look at on that diagram is we're going to look at the Heroku Dino. And we're going to take a look at the form service Java class that sits behind the REST API. So again, it's a simple REST API for consumption. We wanted to use REST API because it's lightweight. And we wanted to make sure that not only our Salesforce tier could use it, but also our other applications that are legacy applications. So I'm going to open up the file. Here I have a forms manager class, my Apex class, sorry. Here's our Java class. It's a simple form service that sits on Heroku. And we have some simple annotations here. So as Java, I have the path name on the, on the URL that is going to basically invoke this REST API. Return, we're returning back JSON, so it's easy to be processed in the Salesforce tier. Because how many of you use json.serialize? OK. If you haven't, it's a great utility class in Apex. It lets you serialize and deserialize objects and data. It's much, much better than the Apex to WSDL um, generator for SOAP. So we chose, we chose REST because it's so easily usable. So here we have a method that says it exposes HTTP REST service. And basically, it takes in the, the values from the post command. And we set a form response object. This is going to be the object that JSON is going to serialize and deserialize. <clears throat> so the first thing we do is we look at the payload and we iterate. We get the template URL from the payload. This is going to be a publicly accessible URL where we store our PDF. In this case, it's in Chatter as a public URL. Here we instantiate a PDF reader object from iText. And we pass in the location of our PDF. So now at this point, Heroku has the PDF bytes from Chatter. And it's ready to start merging that with a data set. We set up our output streams. And then we simply iterate over all of the fields. This will iterate over all of the fields in the template. And we basically match all of the forms to all of the data. So we passed along all that information about our contract. It's iterating over it. This line is matching it to the form, whatever the business user called it in the form. It's matching it with what's in the S object, filling in the PDF. Then we do what's called flattening a PDF. Um, if you didn't know, you can generate PDFs that are fillable. People can type it in. People can submit data. You can execute JavaScript in PDFs. When you flatten a PDF, users can't do anything. So for a contract, once we're done with it, we don't want anybody to change it. We want to flatten it. It's basically like printing it out on a piece of paper. Finally, we take this byte array that we got from our PDF reader. And we encode it into base64 so that our REST API and Salesforce controller can process it. We set a template name of return payload. And then finally, we return the S object, or I'm sorry, we return the forms response object as a JSON object to the calling application. So as you can see here, this, this class is less than 100 lines of code to generate this PDF form. So this is, the, this is all the code that's in the Heroku tier. Not a whole lot to it, really. So the next piece we have to look at is the Apex tier, the Salesforce tier. So we have a form service class, as I said, we're going to dig into. We have an Apex trigger controller. We have an Apex trigger handler, I'm sorry. A controller, a trigger, and a visual force page. Again, um, how many of you are, have, are using the trigger handler pattern? OK. If you're not and your developers aren't doing it, 
make sure to let them use it. You never want to write business logic in your trigger. You want to put that all into a trigger handler class so that it can be reused and uh, you can simplify your trigger logic. So we're going to dig into the form service manager. So here's our forms manager. It's a forms manager class calling a REST-based form service. And the first thing you'll notice is we have a future method here. This is a wrapper. So again, I said if you're in a trigger and you need to call an HTTP callout, you need to do it asynchronously. So we have this generate PDF forms asynchronously method. It can be invoked from a trigger. But notice it doesn't do anything. It just calls the generate PDF form method. And so finally, what's the generate PDF form method? This is the guts of the logic of calling it out. So it's encapsulated in this service class so that we can call out to the form service from any point. And it takes an S object, the contract object that you saw on the screen. We set up our tries, or we set up our request and response. We create a list of form parameters from the S object. Again, we're doing a REST POST, so we're post putting all of our form parameters in there. We grab a custom setting. Custom settings allow you to store things like URL endpoints, template URLs. So here we're grabbing the PDF URL location that's stored in Chatter. Somebody's maintaining that in a custom setting so we don't have to deploy any code. And the last parameter we add is a special parameter called template URL, which in our Heroku Dino it was looking for that in the post at the very beginning as you saw. We set the request body as our form parameters. We set our content type. We're, we're calling out with an application formula all encoded. We set our endpoint from our custom settings, again, because you're probably going to have a sandbox, a production environment. So we have multiple endpoints. We use a custom setting. We call the request, HTTP send. This is going to call the REST API. And then again, we use our good friend, json.serialize, to deserialize this response into an Apex class that holds the data. Now that I have a PDF response object in Apex class, I'm going to attach it to my Salesforce object. So I, have, I create an attachment record. Here's the magic where we take the actual PDF bytes. Remember I said we stored it as base64. I use in code utils base64 decode that into the blob, store that on the attachment.body, insert the attachment, and then do a little DML update to say the contract's been generated. And then I finally update the PDF contract. And if there's an exception for any reason, it throws a custom exception saying, hey, I couldn't render the PDF. Finally, here's our Apex PDF response class. Remember, I used the JSON serialize, deserialize. This allows you to basically use the, that method to basically parse your payloads. So it's, pretty, it's a pretty lightweight class for our use case here. So again, if we want to look at the trigger invocation, so that's, that's the forms manager service class. As you can see, all of the logic around calling that form service was encapsulated in that class. Now I have the handle before I have a contact trigger handler. And this method is what basically, as you can see here, it checks to see. Remember, I wanted to say I could also call it from a trigger. This will call it, it'll check to see is the value set to request contract generation? If it is, set it to say that it's processing. And in my trigger, I call this asynchronous method generate PDF forms asynchronously. So here I can call it again from a trigger, which a lot of people need to do. And you could apply this pattern if I wanted to do this in batch Apex, scheduled Apex. I could call this from any point in Salesforce that I needed to. For example, if we look at our PDF controller, you'll notice that it's, again, very simple. I have a method, generate PDF. And it calls the forms manager service, passing it the S object. Yeah. 
Um, so I'm going to open up the floor to questions. If anyone has any questions about how they could do this at their office, if you have any use cases, is it a good fit? You know, any questions about generating PDF forms on Heroku? Um, feel free to ask any questions. If you want additional resources, check out iText, um, the Heroku Java website, uh, developersalesforce.com. Also, if you don't feel comfortable asking questions here, you can ask me questions on Twitter. Uh, my handle's at Corey Cowgill, hashtag AskForce. And again, um, at the Warranty Group, we are hiring Salesforce developers. So uh, if you're Salesforce Ninja, come see me after the session. Yeah, and, and you just uh, approach the mic, please, so everyone can hear the questions. Yeah, I was wondering, is, is that stuff all schedulable for, from an Apex schedule? schedule Absolutely. Class? So what, you, what I didn't do is you could do a scheduled Apex class. Yeah. And because I encapsulated all of my logic inside that forms manager, you could call that inside of a scheduled Apex. You can call that forms manager right. inside of there. So that's specifically why we took that logic, because we have use cases where at night we want to process batches and send out all right. the contracts at night. That allows us to do it. OK, great, because you can't. Get, get content in Apex with, with schedule, I noticed. It doesn't do a get content method Yeah. in a, in a, in a Visual Force page. But. Yeah, so you can do it. It's batchable, so you can do multiples in one call, as you can see there. Um, the, one gotcha is, the one gotcha you need to remember is you're only allowed, you used to be only allowed 10 callouts in one Apex transaction. Now you're allowed, in Winter 15, you're allowed 100. So that's a pretty powerful thing, but you have to remember is, each of those callouts is going to take up an Apex transaction time, and you're limited to 10 seconds for an Apex transaction. So I would not recommend making 100 PDF calls in one Apex transaction, but using batch Apex, you could simply just limit your scope to 5, 10, 20 PDFs in one batch Apex and run that. I'll ask the obvious question. Is that code going to be available afterwards to have a look at? Um, I will. I, I hadn't thought about it yet, but you know what? I'll throw it up on GitHub, um, and then I'll post on Chatter on the session, and I'll tweet it out on Twitter. I'll put it on GitHub. It's pretty generic. I'll post it out there Just so people can take it, it yeah. and play with it. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Good questions. What's your Twitter handle? My Twitter handle is at Corey Cowgill, C-O-R-Y. There you go. That's right there. What if, what if you need pagination? I can't hear you, sorry. Uh, what if you need pagination in the form? Yes. So what you can do is you can do, um, we're using acro forms, which are static forms for most of our PDF, but a lot of times you need to do dynamic form, right. which is basically, I want to add three pages. The iText, if you check out the iTextPDF.com slash product, um, they have libraries for doing more than just acro forms. They have dynamic forms that you can vary in length. And there's a, there's a whole API library around that. So you can do things with the iText PDF library, like you could, you could render multiple PDFs, pull, put them together. You could distill them and separate them out. There's, it's a huge library. Like I'm only using like literally like maybe 0.5% of that in this use case. But in the iText PDF library, you could do that. So for example, what you could do is do the same thing I'm doing, but your template would be a, maybe a not an acro form, it may be another, I can't remember, it's XFA form, I think, another form technology that iTech supports, and it will generate the content dynamically. Oh, so it's a total different form which we use to, uh, I mean, you don't know how many related lists you have. Yeah, and it would add, it'll, it, it'll add the pages dynamically. Okay. And that's in the, check out the iTech's PDF library, because that doesn't use acro forms, it uses, I believe, XFA. Um, it's a slightly different, Okay. But you can do interesting things like that. Like you can say, I want to templatize my template. So I want a header. I want a footer. And pass that into the iText library, and it'll render a PDF. And you could store those templates in Salesforce and chatter those, and then let it compose them all together when it renders the form. And then you might get like 10 pages or 50 pages, right? So. And also, if you can share your code, that would be great. Yeah. It's, check out the iText PDF uh, site, and it'll be in there. It'll be, it's called, I think it's XFA Forms. Okay, and also, if you can share the code, which you just... Did. Yes, I will, I will put the code up on GitHub from this example. I'll put it on today or tomorrow um, once I'm in my sessions, and then you can use it. Thank you. Yep. Great questions. All right. All right.
Um, if there's no more questions, again, hit me up on Twitter at Corey Cowgill. Happy to answer any questions for you. Thank you.